Hello, it's Keith here and welcome to another assembly programming tutorial. Now we've been looking at the last few weeks at how to do graphics on various Z80 based systems but now we're going to do a bit of a change and we're going to start looking at how to create sounds and today we're going to be looking at the AY sound chip. If you noticed at the start of my introduction I didn't mention the Z80 and that's because we're not going to be just looking at the Z80 because the AY sound chip is actually used by various systems. It's used by the 128K Spectrums, the Amstrad CPC, the Enterprise, the Atari ST and even the Neo Geo has an AY compatible sound chip. So we'll be looking at those five systems today. Now the Neo Geo isn't a true AY, it's an AY compatible and it is actually superior to the AY but today we'll just be looking at the AY functionality. The Neo Geo, although it's a 68000 based processor, actually has a Z80 chip that it handles its sound and you are forced to use the Z80 sound chip because the 68000 processor can't actually access the sound processor. So slightly unusual but it's valid being within these Z80 tutorials. Now the Atari ST doesn't have a Z80 chip in it, it's a pure 68000 processor but I'm planning to do 68000 tutorials next year and I wanted to keep all of the AY tutorials together because a lot of what we're going to be learning today is theory about the, how the registers in the AY processor work and really whatever system you're programming for it do, doesn't matter because it's that theory that is the most complex bit so once you understand what the registers do, how to actually get the data to them and what data you should put in them is fairly trivial and the data you put in is going to be the same whatever the system you end up programming for. So your main call of reference if you really want to get into the AY sound chip should be this reference manual here. It's a PDF that's freely available and it goes into all of the details of how the chip works at a technical level, how the sounds are generated, the various registers, the envelopes that you can use that will um, affect the way the sound works and so on and so forth but it's a little bit complex and I found it quite hard to get started with and I think I can give you an easier tutorial today of how to use the AY sound chip. So as always there's some um, documentation on my website and here it is for today's lesson, lesson P18 of the Z80 tutorials. This will probably be included in the 68,000 tutorials which I will do next year but obviously I can't tell you what number that's going to be at this stage. So the AY has 14 internal registers that define the sound that it's going to create. The AY has three basic sound channels and a noise generator. So a lot of the um, options are split into channels A, B and C. So before we start looking at that we do need to know some simple terminology that you might see in these musical documentations that may be a little bit confusing if you're not familiar with music terminology which I wasn't when I started doing this. This was the first time I'd ever tried to program or work with music hardware before. So um, amplitude is often used for the volume so that's just how loud something is. Envelope is a term that's used for the way something changes over time. Now on the AY sound chip it's the volume over time but it could also be the pitch. The mixer in the AY is the way that we turn channels on or off. You can mess with your volume as much as you want. You won't get a sound out of it if the channel's turned off. Noise is a random noise generator which is used for making distortion sounds. This could be explosions but it's also used in Amstrad music and things for creating cymbals and drum sound effects. And then finally tone is just the pitch of the sound. Now depending on the systems you work with sometimes the lower numbers are higher pitch and sometimes it's the other way around so you can't be sure how the numbers you give the hardware are going to affect the actual sounds that come out. So then the AY registers. So as I said there's three channels and many of them are split into individual channels. So the pitch is defined by two registers, register 0 and 1 for channel A and you can see that there's 12 bits used to define the pitch for each channel. So you've got two registers for channel A, two and eight registers for channel B, two registers for channel C. The noise generator uses five bits which will define the, um, the speed if you will of the noise and so you can make a very slow noise which will sound a bit like an explosion or a very fast noise which will sound a bit like a cymbal. Then you've got the mixer which allows you to turn on the tone sounds and the noise sound for each of our three channels. So the rightmost bit here defines channel A's tone and this bit here defines channel A's noise. Of course the noise generation is shared between all of the channels. Then next you've got the volume setting and you set the volume for each of the channels separately provided of course they're turned on by the mixer. So we're using a 4-bit volume so from 0 to 15 and then finally we've got a special bit which is the envelope bit. If this is turned on then the envelope that we select will affect the volume over time. So again the channels if the envelope is used all share the same envelope. We're not going to particularly look into envelopes but it's worth you knowing them anyway. 
Then you can select the speed that the envelope applies. And finally, you select the envelope itself. And the envelope is defined by its bits here. If you want to see the envelopes that are available to you, then you need to look at the PDF. And you can see here are the envelopes that, are, that the system provides. And this is how the sound is affected over time. Now, when it comes to looking at the sounds in the examples we're going to use today, I do have some little toys that we're going to play with. I've got a frequency spectrum analyzer here. I've got a waveform analyzer here, which will look a bit like an oscilloscope. And I've also got this one, which gives um, relative music notes as well. So I thought it would be a bit fun to have some visual clues to the sound as well as the, um, as well as the sounds themselves. So how do we actually set these registers? Well, on the, uh, on the Z80 systems, they're not memory mapped, so we use the out command. And on most of the systems, it's very easy. There's a register select port, which selects, we send a number, which says the register we want to change. So for example, zero. And then we send the new value to the data port, which is a different port. Now that's true of all of the systems. So strangely enough, even the Neo Geo and the Atari ST, although the Atari ST ports are much longer. But um, the Amstrad CPC is a little bit tricky. Because the Amstrad CPC, the AY, chip is connected to the PPI chip, we actually have to talk through the PPI. And so we have to do a, a bit of um, a game to get to the, the data to the PPI, including sending some register select commands and some inactive commands to get the data to the Amstrad CPC hardware. However, actually, it's all pretty simple. And we can just use this as a sort of boilerplate command to do the job that this command and this command and this command did on the other systems. So it's a bit of a pain. but once we get it working, we don't really need to worry about how it works because we know it is going to work. So that's the theory out of the way. Um, well, what are we going to do today? Well, firstly, we're going to look at how the hardware works and have a few bit of a play. But the end game that we're looking to achieve is to write a little program that I call Chibi Sound. So what is Chibi Sound? Well, Chibi Sound say it takes a single byte in the accumulator, and this gives us a, a variety of sounds that we can create with the, uh, with the purpose of creating special effects in our game. It's not designed for music, just simple beeps and noise effects. So if the um, value that is passed is zero, then the sound is off. If the value is from 0, 1 to 3F, which is 63, then you will get a quiet tone. 0, 1 is the highest pitch, and 3F would be the lowest pitch. And then if we add 64 to that, by effectively setting bit 6, then we will get a louder tone. And if we set the top bit, bit 7, then we will get noise. And so if bit 6 is not set and bit 7 is set, we get quiet noise. And again, the pitches will apply. And if both the top two bits are set, we get loud noise. And again, we have pitches from 0, 1 to 3F. So there we go. It, it's very, very simple, but it works on all of the systems. And Chibi Sound is going to be extended far beyond the Z80 so that you, it will work on the um, 6502 systems and the 68000 systems as well. So even if Chibi Sound isn't enough for what you need to do, it's a good starting point for you to take a look at, see some sample code, and see how the various systems compare with regards to doing simple noise effects, simple sound effects, and you can build on it to create something a bit better. So there we go. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's get all of this out of the way then. Let's just close these. So here is a very simple AY example. Um, so you, you can see at the bottom here, we've got a command AY red write. Now this has various modules for the different systems. So there's the Amstrad CPC module, there's the ZX Spectrum module, and there's the MSX module. But effectively all it does in all cases is it will set the register passed in the accumulator to value C. That's all it does. So we're going to basically ignore that and we're just going to look at these sections here. So you'll see in this case, we're setting register six, which is the noise register to this value here. And what we're going to do is we're going to try playing with this bit of code here. We're going to disable and enable various parts and we're going to see how the sound is affected. Now, as I've said, this module will work on a Spectrum 128K an MSX, an Amstrad CPC. However, we're only going to be trying it on one of those systems because the sound chip is identical, so the sound will also be basically identical. So there's really no point seeing it on so many systems. So let's fire it up and let's see what the, um, the code is currently set to do. It's 
but hopefully you can hear now that it's making a kind of tone. So there we go. Now, what's controlling that tone? Well, the pitch is defined by these here. So let's try adding a number here. And so that's going to effectively increase the value that is stored in the tone registers, registers 0 and 1, if you remember. So I've increased the number and the tone has got lower. Now you'll notice that this wave here is kind of, um, it goes sharply up and sharply down. It's not a very smooth curve and this is referred to as a square wave. Uh, basically the AY sound chip, very crude sound effects. So you do get these square waves and they give the AY that kind of distinctive sound that people either love or hate. Personally I'm very used to it so I guess if I had to choose one of those two, I guess I kind of love it. So now I've changed all those two bits to zeros and A, A1 is the higher value register. So I'm leaving all of these as ones because these, this is the less val valuable register in the two. This is the high bit and that's the, this is the high byte and that's the low byte. And now you can hear the pitch is much higher. So there you go. So that's how we can affect the pitch of the sound using these registers 0 and 1. Now if we wanted to do channels B and channel C, you can see they're here. So we just change our 0 and 1 to 2 and 3 or 4 and 5 to change the tone of the other channels. Now you'll see that the noise register here is set, but you'll think, well maybe that's a bit odd, I didn't hear any noise. Well that's because the noise is not set in the mixer. The rightmost three bits define the tone, so you can see this bit is 0. Rather oddly, the bits in the, in the mixer one actually means the channel is muted. So you can see this bit zero and that means that channel A is switched on for tone but is switched off for noise. So if I set this bit here to zero it will now be switched on for noise. So let's hear that. And now we have a noisy sound. Now let's just prove that. Let's turn the tone off and now we will just have noise. So there we've got noise. Now we can define the um, frequency of the noise here. So if I just change the two bits to zero. You can hear that noise is kind of more high pitched. Kind of sounds a bit more like a TV out of tune now or something. So that's how we can define our um, noise. Let's turn the noise off. And let's turn the tone back on. Now, let's just hear that again. So there's our, so there's our tone. So you can see as the tone is playing, you've got this sort of um, waveform here, and the lower pitch the tone, the wider the wave becomes. So a wave like this would be low pitch, and a wave like this would be very high pitch. You'll also notice the height of the wave. Now, as it gets quieter, the height will get shorter. So let's try that now. So these are the volume bits for channel one. So let's try turning these two bits off. And this will make the wave slightly shorter and the sound slightly quieter. So now you can see it's slightly shorter. It's, it's barely visible at all, really. And the sound is slightly quieter. And as we reduce this value here in this four bit value, the sound will get quieter and quieter. Now this bit here turns on the envelope, so let's have a go with the envelopes. So now the envelope is switched on, we need to set the envelope generation, which is these definitions here in 11, 12 and 13. And when we are going to set these, we need to have a look at our AY manual here. So you can see we've got various options for our wave, and you can effectively work out what the sound is going to do based on the um, one we select. So let's select this one here, 1010. That looks quite kind of fun. It's, it's this kind of zigzag. So let's try that. So 1010, that's our wave here. So we've got this kind of pulsing effect. Now at the moment it sounds a bit like a sonar blip or something, it's quite infrequent, but if we made it much faster maybe it would sound more like a delete key being held down or something. So let's try and speed it up a bit. And we can do that with these settings here. 
So if I change this one to zero, there we go, it's got a lot faster. And you can see that changing this value here is the high byte in register 12, and this is the low byte in register 11. So if I change this one to zero, and then change this one to one, it will get even faster again. And there we go. So there we've effectively looked at all of the registers that the AY sound chip has for defining sound effects. So how are we going to use that in Chibi sound? Well, Chibi sound, as I've said, is just going to take a single byte and depending on the bits in that byte, it's going to make a tone, a noise effect, it's going to reduce the volume and also it's going to make low and high pitched tones with the lower numbers being the higher pitch on all systems. So. Here are the bits contained within it. These are the tone bits, this is the volume bit, and this is the noise bit. So we need to have a look at the, the accumulated that we were passed and work out how to set the AY chip depending on what it was told to do. First is the special zero command, which turns off the sound. So we check if the accumulator is zero and jump to silent here. If it is silent, then we turn that mixer, set all the bits to one, which silences the AY sound chip very quickly. And that's all we need to do. So if, we, if it was a zero, then we're done. Now, first thing we need to do, because we need to do various things with the various bits in A, so we back it up. Next, we take three, the three lowest bits from A, and we shift them along, and we store them in the low byte of the um, tone register, just here. And we send that to the accumulator, of course, in register zero for channel A. We're doing everything in channel A here. And then we need to do the same for the high byte register. And we take the remaining three bits here and we shift them along. And then we store them in register one, which is the high byte that defines the tone of channel A. Now, next, we want to check if there's any noise. If there isn't, then we skip over the next bit. If there is, then we need to turn the noise channel on for channel A with this bit here by setting it to zero. And we call AY reg right again. And then we set our noise rate, and that's the definition we're using for our noise in this case. And we call the register again. Now, if we get to this point here, then the noise is not enabled. So we turn on our, our tone channel, turn off our noise channel, and send that to, to register seven, which is the mixer. Finally, we need to set our volume. Now, we've only got one bit defining the volume as high or low. We don't have much definition there. So all we do is we shift it along and then we slot it into this bit position here so that the quiet tones are still fairly loud because we don't want to have tones we can barely hear, but it will make a noticeable difference to the volume. And then we pass that over to register eight, which defines the, the volume for channel A. And that's really all there is to it. So that's the Chibi Sound driver for the AY sound chip. And now let's have a listen to what Chibi sound actually sounds like. So I've got this very simple example here. All we're gonna do is we're gonna start A off with the default value. We're gonna show it on the screen using the show hex command, call Chibi sound with that value, and then we're gonna pause for a little moment, and then we're gonna loop changing the value of the accumulator. So we'll hear all of the sounds Chibi sound offers us. see how the waveform is changing up here and you can see the pitch going up on this graph here and also the notes changing here and now this is the quieter version as you can see the um, graph is much much flatter here Now the noisy ones, firstly the loud noisy ones. You can see how rough the um, oscilloscope effect here is. Now we're into the quiet values.
and we're back through looping through now. So there you go. And that's how Chibi Sound creates various noises based on a single byte. As I've said, if you want to see it in use, take a look at Grime Z80, which used Chibi Sound for all of its sound effects. So now we've looked at how the AY sound chip works and how we can call it with the Z80. And as I've said, this code is basically identical on all of the Z80 systems, the Amstrad CPC, the Spectrum and the MSX. Uh, the only difference is the actual command that we use to get the values we want to the AY sound chip. And in the most cases, it's just simply a case that the, the port that we out to is different depending on the system. And it's only the Amstrad CPC where we have to go through another chip that it's a little bit complicated. So that's the pure Z80 systems. But I promised we were going to do something a little bit different today. And we're going to look at two other systems. So maybe you'll indulge me in a case of spot the difference. This is actually 68,000 assembly language. Uh, we're not going to cover 68,000 assembly language at this point, but I'll just give you a very brief introduction here then. So um, this is a basic loop. We're just moving the cursor to the top of the screen. We're showing register D0, which I'm using in the same purpose as the accumulator in the last example. So this is showing it to the screen. We're then pausing here and we're calling Chibi Sound with D0, which and Chibi Sound uses the D0 register. Now the AY sound chip works in exactly the same way on the 68000 systems. So let's see Chibi Sound in action on the Atari ST. So as you before, we've got some um, the register being shown in the corner and all the registers on the 68000 are 32 bit. So obviously it's a much larger register. And so you can see, again, as the number increases, you get the same kind of sound effects as on the other systems. And that's because it is an AY sound chip. It works exactly the same. It looks like the volumes are quite louder, but I think that's actually just down to the emulator. So anyway, so how are we actually getting our data to the AY sound chip? So enough of that. How are we actually getting our data to the AY sound chip? Well, this is the 68,000 version of Chibi Sound. So what I did is I took the Z80 code and I replaced the Z80 instructions with 68,000 instructions. We're only going to go through them very quickly because, as I've said, this is an AY tutorial, not a 68,000 tutorial. I'll be doing 68,000 tutorials next year. So first thing we're doing is we've got this set AY register, which sends the data to the AY ports on the 68000 on the Atari ST. The ports are memory mapped. So this is the register select port and this is the register data port. So we're using D0 for the register we want to select and D1 for the new value for that register. So apart from that, everything's pretty much the same as before. Now on the 68000, all registers are 32 bits. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm removing any extra bits because we only want a single byte to avoid any mistakes. So then I'm seeing if that is zero. And if it is, I'm jumping to silent, exactly the same as we did before. And exactly as we did before, if it's silent, we're setting all of the bits that control register seven, which is the mixer, to zero. And we do that just by selecting register seven in D zero, setting all the bits, mixer bits to one in D one and calling set AY register. So it's very simple. Next, we're doing the same as before, taking three of the bits from the accumulator, we're shifting them to the right three positions, which is the equivalent of RRB hash three, means in the byte, rotate to the right three positions. So that's the equivalent of three RRCAs. Then we're doing an OR to fill the remaining bits, and we're storing that in register one. And then we're setting register zero to zero because we want to change register zero in the AY. Then we're doing the pretty much the same thing for the remaining bits to set the top byte that defines the tone. And again, we're doing set AY. This is actually some test code that I left in. This calls a monitor, which shows all the register values. I was obviously having some trouble at some point, so we, that shouldn't really be there. Now we want to see if bit seven is set and we use this B test command to do that. So we said testing D3. We're using D3 as our backup in the same way as we used H on the Z80. If it is set, we want to make a noise. So we set this bit here to zero and that turns on the noise channel for the channel A. Again, we call set AY register, setting register seven to this value. 
and then we need to set the um, rate of the noise so we have these bits set here and that's defined by register 6 and then we jump over the no noise bit and the no noise bit just turns off the noise channel on the mixer so again very simple finally we, the thing we want to look at is the volume bit which is bit 6 in the accumulator that was passed to us which we're using D0 is the original accumulator and D3 is the backup we're using D0 effectively as A and D3 effectively as H if you compare it to the ZH example. Now we want to set the other bits to 1 because again we need we need we need to make sure the quiet channel the quiet mode is still heard but we want it to be noticeably quieter so we're setting this third bit to 1 or 0 depending on whether that volume bit is set in the accumulator that's passed to us. Finally we set that to to register 8 within the AY chip and then we're done and this is the return command on the 68000. That's all there is really to it for the um, Atari ST so not too complicated there but there is one more thing we want to have a look at the Neo Geo. Now the Neo Geo is also a 68000 processor uh, but rather oddly as well as a 68000 processor it also has a Z80 and the Z80 is included in the system as a sound chip but Unfortunately for us, arguably, the 68000 is unable to access the sound processor. So it's not the case that we have a sound processor we can use, we have a sound processor we have to use. So what we've got to do is we've got to use Z80 code to tell the AY sound chip within the FM sound chip of the Neo Geo, because the Neo Geo is a superior sound processor, but it has legacy compatibility with the AY. So we have to create a Z80 program to do our work on the sound chip and that's what we've done here and then we have to get our 68000 program to talk to our Z80 and tell the Z80 what to do. Now this example code I can't claim it's mine I got this from this website here it was a beginner's tutorial and I've built upon it to make it work with Chibi Sound. So most of this is just stock code and the, the first real code I've put in is here. Now the way the 68000 and the, the Z80 work together is as a single port on the 68000 side and there's two ports on the Z80 side. On the Z80 there's a separate read and write port and the 68000 uses the same port for both read and write and so the Z80 can send a single byte to the 68000 or it can read a single byte from the 68000 and we have to do all of our communication in one byte sort of stages. Now this would be fine because Chibi Sound only uses a single byte however unfortunately some of these are system functions so when the um, when the Neo Geo starts up you often see that Neo Geo splash screen with the Neo Geo sound and that is actually a command that's passed to the Z80 saying hey play the Neo Geo sound and you'll notice in my example that I'm about to show you there is no, no Neo Geo sound because I haven't actually coded that so I've been naughty but more seriously um, we can't use all of the bits of the, um, the byte that is passed to the Z80 because some of them are reserved now commands 1 and 3 are definitely reserved but technically we really need to reserve the first 32. Well I've come up with a simple solution to that, or relatively simple anyway. Um, any byte passed to the Z80 with the top bit which is of course worth 128 bit 7 not set is considered to be a system command and ignored by Chibi Sound. When the top bit is set it's considered to be a Chibi Sound command. If the next bit is a 0 then the lower nibble of that byte is loaded into a buffer and then a command is sent back to the 68000 the command being the symbol 255 and then the system waits to get another bit this time with both the top two bits set and then it reads that nibble in merges it with the nibble that it read before and that becomes the chibi sound command so we're splitting our byte into two nibbles passing them in two stages to the Z80 through that single port which is the only way that we can communicate to the Z80 processor there's no shared memory there's no other thing we can do so this is the way of getting a full byte to the Z80 in, in the Neo Geo at least the best way I worked out there may be a better one that I don't know I'm still learning the Neo Geo which is why we're not covering the 68000 until next year so if, if we get less than 128 we ignore the command for chibi sound and just skip over it if the, we then only want to look at the top two bits if the top bits are 1 and 0 then it's the first byte if not it's the second byte so we load in the nibble these are the, bytes, these are the bits of the nibble we want shift it across to the left hand side nibble and then merge in the right hand side nibble that we stored before and then we jump to the actual chibi sound call to make the sound 
Once we've done that, we just finish up by jumping to the return, which clears the command. Now you can see here the command returned to the 68,000 is in port C and the command read is in port 0. Now if it's not the second command and it's the first command, which is defined by bits 1 and 0 at the left hand side, then we're reading in the first nibble and we do, we do pretty much the same again. We restore the original command that was passed to us by the 68,000, which is read in here and backed up here. Then we select only the rightmost four bits, store it in the temporary value here, which is used later here. That's defined at the bottom of the, co the code here in the memory area that's in just in this range here. There's just very little memory for the Z80, but it should be enough for us. Once we've read in the first nibble, we then tell the 68000 that we want to receive the second nibble now. So we send a command 255 to its command port so that it will know that we want the second nibble and the rest of the work is done over here. So this is the 68000 chibi sound command for the Neo Geo and you can see it's very short and that's because actually all of the dirty work is being done by the Z80 but I'm not going to show you that because it's literally the exact same code as that we just looked at on the Spectrum and on the MSX just with different port numbers for the Neo Geo's ports. So here's the here is the chibi sound command. So we're past the new value for chibi sound in register D0. We back it up into D1. We then take the right hand nibble of the lowest byte. This means B, B means byte, so we're working at a single byte because remember all registers in the 68000 are 32 bit. We then set to the top bit to one and the next bit to zero because remember this is the command for the first nibble being passed. We then send that to the register to the memory map register 320000, which is the Z80 port for reading and writing. It, it shares the same port on the 68000, but there's two ports on the Z80. A little bit strange there. So once we've sent, the, sent that, we then wait reading in from that port until we get a 255, which means that the Z80 chibi sound has received that byte and is now ready for the next one. Once we get it, in, until we get it, we just loop here waiting around and then once we do get it, we load back in the backed up register here before we mess with the bits. We then take the topmost nibble, we shift it to the right four positions. We then all in one one here to the left hand side, which is the command for the second nibble. And we send it again to the Z80. And this time we don't wait around because the Z80 will deal with it and it will just get on with playing the music. So we then just return. And so this is a direct swap in replacement for the Atari ST version that you just saw. And let's have a look at that now. So we're using the MAME here. We're using MAME here. No sound on my Neo Geo splash screen. And that's because, as I've said, the um, I'm not supporting the commands that are needed to actually give that effect. And you can see here once again, that you've got the on-screen display here going up and the sound is changing accordingly. And the values should be the same as on the other system. Now you've got some graphical glitching going on here. I think that's because I'm probably not, um, I'm probably updating the screen while the interrupts are handling. So maybe I'm being a bit mischievous there. All of this is still early test code, as I say. It's gonna be next year I'm really gonna start picking in the 68,000 tutorials once I'm more confident with them. So anyway, that's enough of that noise. So. Just as an added little bonus then, I'm just going to briefly explain how the um, Neo Geo works with its ROM because you need to know a little bit about it to be able to use the sound chip. Now, with regards to MAME, the way the ROMs work is they're actually a set of files and the format is defined by the Neo Geo here. And I've actually based this on an example I found online and just made a few tweaks. So um, this is the example I based it on. Um, someone called Freemco apparently. So, um, you can see here there's various files and they have load positions here and each one has a different position. So there's the main CPU, which I think is the core code. There's the fixed ROM, which is basically a tile map for, um, for basically characters. And I'm using that for my font. As you can see, I've got two fixed files here. That's the um, default one that came with the tutorial. And this is the um, Chibiakuma's font that I use in all of my tutorials converted into the correct format 
for the Neo Geo. The one we're more interested in this time is this audio CPU section. This is what handles the sound. Now, if I take this out, um, so my Z80 code is being compiled to this file here. Now, if I take this out, and I compile again, Now you can hear the Neo Geo sound. As I said, my Z80 emulator, as I said, my Z80 driver does not have support for that. But now you'll hear the Chibi sound is not working and it's actually locked up. And the reason for that is the Z80 is no longer running the ROM code that I gave it. And so it's no longer giving the 68,000 the reply saying, I'm ready for the second nibble of the, of the Chibi sound command. So as I say, um, these XML files are very important when it comes to um, making a ROM file that works for the Neo Geo. Unfortunately, Neo Geo ROMs seem to be very complicated and I'm sure other emulators don't work in the same way. And I think some of the other emulators actually struggle to run unofficial ROMs because the mapping of the ROMs within memory are actually hard coded into the emulators. I certainly struggle to figure it out. So this is the only, this is currently the only way I've got ROMs working with MAME with the um, XML here that you can see and I'm just tweaking it as I go along learning how to do things. So anyway, that's the end of today's lesson. So as always, the um, documentation on today's lesson is on my website. So please go and take a look at that. Um, this is just the start of the audio series. We're going to be doing Chibi sound in the same way, in the same functionality on all of the Z80 systems. And in the future, we're going to extend into the 6502 and the 68000 processors. And in some cases, like the um, Master System Game Gear sound chip, the um, Sega Genesis and I believe also the BBC have the same sound chip. So in the same way, we're going to cover those systems at the same time, because I don't want to make two videos with a load of theory that um, explains how the chip works and then miss out on a computer that I'm planning to cover in the future when I could bundle them all together in almost the same time. If you've enjoyed today's lesson, please like it and please subscribe to my channel so that you catch those later videos. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. Thanks for watching and goodbye.